Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from AnthonyMorganti.com. This is episode 26 of Lightroom Quick Tips. In this episode, I'm going to show you how you could get a customized before image when you're doing a before-after comparison. Let me try to explain. As you can see in this image, it's a black and white image. It does also happen to be a fully processed black and white image. Now, if I want to see the before version of this image, there's a couple different ways I could do that. I could hit the Y key on my keyboard. Most of, you, most of you guys probably know this, right? And here's the before and here's the after. I could hit the Y key again. I'm back to the processed image. Now I have an American keyboard and I could do it another way by hitting the backslash key uh, on the keyboard. And you could see there's the before. I hit the backslash key again and there's the after. Now I shot this image in color. So my before is a color image. I would prefer though to compare it to a black and white image. Uh, how can you go about doing that? It just doesn't seem relevant to compare this fully processed black and white image to a raw color image. Uh, I'd rather you know see it in black and white. Well, it's very easy to do. First we're gonna do is we're gonna give us a little more room. I'm gonna close these panels down and I'm gonna close Navigator down over here. So what we're going to do is go over to this left panel, to the History panel. And you can see this is every step of processing that I did. The first step I did after I imported the image is I converted it to black and white. The second step I did was I enab enabled a lens profile. I'm going to choose, I want Enable Lens Profile to be my before image. All I have to do is right click on that. You can see this little menu pops up and the second choice is copy history step settings to before, whatever that means, but do this, just choose that. Now, when I hit the Y key, I, my before image is that step right after I enabled my lens profile and my after image is the same, the fully processed image. And of course, if I hit the backslash key, there's before and there's after. That just seems a lot more relevant to look at the black and white image compared to a black and white image. It loses something when you look at it if you're looking at it compared to a color image, at least in my opinion. Now, most of you know that watch all my videos, I've converted a lot of images to black and white and sometimes I don't convert them to black and white until much later in my workflow. Uh, quite frankly, I'll do that if I'm not sure I'm going to make a black and white image when I start. I think I might go be going in thinking I'm going to make a color image. And as I'm going along, I decide I might like a black and white image. Then I'll do a conversion. In that case, my convert to black and white would be way up here somewhere. So this would be more relevant if you do the convert to black and white very early in your workflow like I did in this image. And there are times when I know for a fact I'm going to convert a, uh, an image to black and white that I'll do it right away. For instance, street photography, almost almost all my street photography, 90% of it's in black and white. So I'll convert almost right away into black and white. So you could get a nice comparison that way, a before after. So it's really up to you. Uh, everyone's workflow is personal and um, you know should be that way to help uh, you express yourself properly. So that's it for uh, Lightroom Quick Tips, episode 26. I'd like to thank everyone that watches my videos. I really, really do appreciate it. I cannot thank you enough. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. All right, I'll talk to you guys soon.